If summer is your favorite season, please tell me why. Hello, and welcome to, or back to, my channel. I'm Kit, and today we're going to look at a Melanie King video. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Melanie, and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content she puts out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video, and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below, along with sources and resources, and now, onto the reason we're all here. Melanie King is yet another red pill YouTuber, and in April she posted the video, Feminists Finally Admit That Casual Sex Has Destroyed Women. And I'm not sure if she's saying that a feminist admitted this, or if she's saying that feminists are admitting this. Either way, it has the word feminist in it, so my attention was piqued. And I got much more than I bargained for, which is why we are here now. Before we get into it, I do want to say that I appreciate how so many of you are unaware of folks like Melanie while being aware of my tiny channel. I I do get a kick out of it, and I also got a kick out of this comment left on the poll where I found out that my algorithm is more cursed than most. Intelligent lady, unlike some of those who watch your channel. That's just too good. Let's see what this intelligent lady has to say. I, I hear from a great many young women who were put on the pill at the age of 14 and came off it so maybe 10 years later and realized they'd done a complete personality flip and actually they, you know, I, I, I was, you know, one said and I quote, I, I thought I was bipolar. Mm. But then it turned out actually it was just this psychoactive substance that I'd been. What, what were they doing to me? And this is all, and, and, and this was all to the to the purpose of rendering a woman you know, receptive to what, what what is for the most part loveless and sometimes extremely degrading um, sexual access. And, and it's, I struggle to see in what way that's in women's interests. And, and given the great many other things that, to my eye, are downstream of the entry into that paradigm, it seems to me that a good place to start would be a, the feminine feminist movement against the pill and for rewilding sex, returning the danger to sex, returning the intimacy and, and really the consequentiality to sex. And a great deal follows from an, an intentional reconnection of women's, op women's opting intentionally to reconnect with the fullness of our embodied nature. If anyone is wondering, yes, we're going to ignore people who use birth control for reasons other than preventing pregnancy. And it's extremely interesting how, when folks like these hear stories that confirm their biases, they don't question further, they just accept it as supporting evidence to their claim. And they don't extend that courtesy to anything that says different, even actual peer-reviewed studies. Anyway, that woman is Mary Harrington, the author of the Lauren Southern article, How My Trad Life Turned Toxic. Mary is also a proponent of reactionary feminism and the author of the book, Feminism Against Progress. And in this clip, Mary is speaking on a panel hosted by none other than the Heritage Foundation, the conservative think tank behind Project 2025. I would like to say that I'm not the arbiter of feminism and have myself been accused of being too radical and also of being a lib femme not worthy of calling myself a feminist. That being said, how is Mary Harrington a feminist? She wants to rewild sex? People don't have to take birth control. If someone wants to have sex without it, they're free to do so. But banning it or restricting it so severely that people have no choice but to do things the way Mary and other conservatives think is better, where is the feminism? But this video is about Melanie, not Mary, so let's continue. The feminist case against having sex for fun. American conservatives are cozying up to the British feminists who argue that the sexual revolution has hurt women. Hey guys, it's your girl, Melanie. I found this to be so interesting that <clears throat> there are feminists, I guess in the UK now, that are saying the sexual revolution has hurt women. It has set women back. When we know in modern society that the sexual revolution and especially feminists, they go hand in hand. They say that, you know, it's her body, her choice. She does what she wants. A woman can have sex like a prostitute. I'm going to need a source for this claim that most people having casual sex are doing so in exchange for money or favors. And anyone who spends time in feminist spaces knows there are varied opinions on sex work with most concern being that if someone is doing it because they need to make money, they're not really consenting and thus steps should be taken to ensure that anyone engaging in sex work isn't doing so because they have no other option. And it, it should not bother anyone. There's no harm in it. There's nothing detrimental about it. Women can have sex like men have had sex for, you know, for all of history. I'm curious if women weren't having sex like men for all of history, who were those men having sex with? A woman can take in 
different men into her body and there'll be no, you know, physical damage. Can someone educate me on what physical damage sex can cause? Yes, it can hurt. Yes, it can go wrong. But unless you're doing something rough or non-consensual, which I don't think Melanie is alluding to, I'm at a loss. There'll be no psychological damage. There'll be nothing wrong with her at the end of the day that it is natural for a woman to want to sleep with as many men as possible. Folks get so weird about women having sex. It's either waiting for marriage or sleeping with as many people as possible. I don't know who needs to hear this, but it's actually not an either or. And now that modern medicine has made it possible, women are free to do that. Women can exercise their options. And if you say anything against it, well, shame on you. That's talk of the patriarchy and that's misogyny. Or for me, internalized misogyny. Let's get into this because I find this extremely interesting and our, you know, that feminists could be possibly waking up to the lies and delusions that they have been sold and now selling to other women and realizing that, oh my goodness, are those the consequences of my choices? A big part of this conversation seems to be the assumption that feminists are a group of cis straight women having sex with men. And I would like to note that feminists come in all flavors, male or female, cis or trans, gay or straight, asexual or allosexual, and even combinations. And not only that, but we also arrive at different conclusions based on a variety of factors. It's not casual sex is okay, therefore I must and should have as much of it as possible with as many people as possible. And more to the point, we also realize that what's for me might not be for thee. Just because Sarah enjoys sex outside of a relationship doesn't mean Becky will feel the same. And that's okay. In February, America's most prominent conservative activist declared his opposition to having sex for fun. In a post on, on X, the anti-woke crusader Christopher Rufo wrote, recreational sex is a large part of the reason we have so many single mother households, which drives poverty, crime, and dysfunction. The point of sex is to create children. This is natural, normal, and good. Now, I don't know how far he takes it. I think having sex within the, you know, the, the, the confines of marriage or relationship is one thing. I wouldn't get too cozy with conservatives then. Most, if not all of them, believe sex should only be had in marriage. I don't think that people should just have sex when they just want to create a child. That seems like a very extreme stance. But what I think is the extreme thing that is going on is we know this, the, how women now are just having casual sex and with no regard for their bodies. Citation needed. With no regard for their chastity. Why would we regard our chastity? with no regard for a life that they may create because a lot of them are using baby deletion as a form of birth control. That is just flat out false. No one is using abortion as birth control. Setting aside the fact that abortions are not free, that an abortion is a medical procedure, as of filming, 14 states have outlawed abortion entirely and 11 states have restricted or severely restricted access. Not to mention, just because abortion is legal in a state doesn't mean it's easy to obtain. So we have seen how the sexual revolution has led to an increase of single mother households because men are not incentivized to marry women because women are giving away sex for free that's the reason men get married? To have sex? I suspect the reason red pillars listen to folks like Melanie and Pearl is because they set the bar for men on the floor. And a man doesn't have to be committed. A man doesn't have to do anything other than be fine enough, be tall enough, make enough money. And a lot of times he doesn't even have to do all that. As long as he, he can talk a woman's pants off, then that's good enough in a lot of- This is a common red pill talking point that women only want men over six feet making six figures a year. But per that dating calculator folks like to use to tell women that their standards are too high, only 1.78% of men meet those qualifications. But Melanie, and to be fair, she's not alone in this, blames women for the increase of single mother households. However, if women in mass were actually holding out for a man who may or may not want kids is between 18 to 50, between six to eight feet, makes over $100,000 a year, may or may not drink and smoke, is unmarried and not obese, wouldn't that lead to less, well, everything? Not only do you have to meet that man, but you also have to get pregnant. Is it possible that maybe, just maybe, 
This whole six by six thing is made up. It's weird. Women have these delusional standards that we want men to, you know, pay for everything. And we want men, they basically want men to treat them as traditional wives while dating. They want men to pay for everything. They want men to do everything for them. But these women are not wise. They give away sex like Tic Tacs. There's no value in sex anymore. The value placed on sex is up to each person. I do enjoy this though. Women simultaneously have too high a standard and are also sleeping with everyone, regardless of whether or not those standards are met. We have the OnlyFans industry and normal women, school teachers, mothers, that are now turning to porn as a viable option in order to make money. She throws that out there without analyzing the reason why mothers or teachers would turn to OF for extra cash. We're supposed to believe that they're morally deficient in some way and to not question the system that leads to women having to sell their bodies for money. And we know the lies that, you know, you're gonna make so much money and be famous and be rich if you do OnlyFans. When the studies show that the average OnlyFans model only makes about $100 a month. So you have these extreme cases of women that have just opened their bodies and their wombs to every Tom, Dick, and Harry and see nothing wrong with these things. They don't seem to understand that there's consequences because society hasn't imposed any consequences. Oh? What sort of consequences should a woman face for having unapproved sex? Are those consequences also supported for the man she has sex with? Is it only heterosex that would receive consequences or would it be everyone? Though if we did get to the point that unmarried people faced consequences for having sex, I don't think gay marriage would be legal anymore, so... It's, you know, the, the sexual revolution was a social experiment. You know, the, the rules of feminism. The sexual revolution and feminism are not interchangeable. They occurred roughly alongside each other, but they are not one and the same. Also, can someone tell me what the rules of feminism are? I guess I was overlooked on the mailing list. That, that was laid out as a better way than the patriarchy it, it, it is it was just a it was just an experiment but now we are seeing how that has ended up where we're having a lot of single mother households women are disgruntled with the dating market because they say there's no good men left where they will you know ride the CC if you don't know what that is you gotta look it up where they will have hot girl summers and do the most <sighs> we've already done this but okay so women simultaneously, have too high a standard that most men don't meet and refuse to lower those standards, but they are also sleeping with a whole bunch of men that they don't want to date? Citation needed. You know, and be liberal with their bodies and, ha and, and, and buying into the woke agenda that tells you that it's just your body, your choice, and anything that goes against that is wrong. It should be demonized and canceled. So Melanie doesn't believe it's her body and thus her decision and what she does with it? She's okay with other people making that decision for her? Also, what goes against my body, my choice that has been demonized and canceled? So they'll do these things in their twenties and they're young and they'll get the bag and scam men for money and go on foodie dates and then say average men are broken dusty, that men that are actually on their looks level are below them because they're able to become a DNA or a skeet receptacle for a top nine, 10 chat for the evening for a man who looks fine enough. We see this activity on dating apps. Considering there's a lot more men than women on dating apps, do we see that? You guys have heard me talk about this over and over. So what has happened is that now that experiment, what it's it, it, what it's done, it has completely ruined marriage. It has completely ruined the nuclear family. And we have a rise of single mothers who are still unhappy. I thought all this free, this sex that you're giving away to men was supposed to be make you happy. You no longer have the rules of, you know, of, of men and, and polite society. You can do whatever you want. That was supposed to make women happy, but we see women are more and more miserable today than ever. Neither feminism nor the sexual revolution are done. There's a lot more work to do and patriarchy hasn't been dismantled there are still rules. Then there's also things like climate change, the global rise of fascism, the reality of living in late stage capitalism. But nope, let's just focus on marriage and sex. And that feminism was a lie. And as women wake up to these things and realize these things, hopefully we can, we can turn back the clock on some of the damage that's done. And what would that entail? What would the world look like if the clock was turned back? But honestly, I don't think we can. Why is that? Much gawking at Rufo's grimly utilitarian take on sex ensued, yet the firestorm largely ignored the women whose anti-birth control tirade had ignited it. 
Rufo's remarks were sparked by a video of a 2023 Heritage Foundation panel. In that clip, a bespectacled British woman details the supposed ravages of oral contraception and the sexual culture um, that birthed it. That's the clip that I played in the beginning of this video. She claims that the normalization of birth control has condemned women to higher rates of mental illness while offering them little in recompense beyond the freedom to endure loveless and sometimes extremely degrading sex. And they're not enduring it. Women are creating those possibilities. Women have created degrading sex. Women have created loveless sex and they've accepted it from men. In fact, that's what they prefer now. Two things. How did women invent loveless and degrading sex? And what is your source for the claim that that's what women prefer now? A lot of older people, people have been married a long time. You don't really understand what's happening in these streets. This is women's preference. The women would rather be in polygamous relationships sharing a man. Polygamy is having more than one wife or husband at a time, which is also bigamy and is illegal in the US. I think she might have meant polyamory, which can come in many different forms. It's not a bunch of women sharing a man. And a man having a bunch of female partners and forbidding them from having other partners is known as a harem and is a red flag. Okay, the top man of their dreams, Prince Charming, because again, every woman's a queen, every woman's a 10, every woman is desirable, and no one can tell them anything different. So because they want to share these top men and because they're giving away sex without any requirement of commitment or marriage or relationship, this is what's happening. So I hate the way they gauge things as though men are doing these things to women. Men are not doing these things to women by force. Women are choosing this path and not just choosing it on an individual level. This is institutional level that women are degrading themselves and are promoted and celebrated for degrading themselves sexually. Look at the slut walk. Look at what happens on campuses. I haven't heard anyone mention slut walk in a long time, but does she know what that is? Judging from the way she speaks of it, I'm guessing no. Slut Walk is a rally, march, protest, and movement aimed to make visible the prevalence of victim blaming, rape culture, street harassment, and sexual violence. Violence and sexual violence affects all genders, LGBTQ plus communities, sex workers, folks with disabilities, and people of color. The movement began in response to a Toronto police officer and his remarks that women should avoid dressing like sluts in order to prevent being sexually assaulted. Perhaps Melanie should learn about the things she speaks of, but I suppose that would leave her with no content. Would they promote women to be promiscuous and anything outside of promiscuity is antiquated, is old, is delusional. Does Melanie think the slut walk is about having sex? We have a rise of women on body counts, meaning women from 18 to 30 have a quadruple increase in body count. While men in the same age range, 18 to 30, there is a 30% increase in young men who are virgins. Men are not, the vast majority of men are not out here running trains on these young women. Young women are choosing to have trains and all types of degrading things run on them and, see, and feel like it's cool. They get brownie points. So let's unpack what Melanie just said. Women ages 18 to 30 have a quadruple rise in sexual partners, but men in the same age range have had an increase in virginity. Of course, she doesn't bother to cite a source for either claim, so the vast majority of men aren't running trains on women. So who are these women sleeping with? And Melanie seriously expects us to believe that young women are choosing to have trains run on them? For anyone wondering, she's saying that young women are having sex with multiple men, one after the other, apparently to be considered cool. What Melanie is doing is disgusting. She's building up her mostly male audience to believe that they are the loveless virgins while all the women are out there sleeping with the same group of men. And by speaking of women as a group, she's also dehumanizing them. And by doing this, she's instilling the belief that if a woman says she was raped or an act wasn't consensual, she wouldn't be believed because women, all women everywhere, actually prefer loveless and degrading sex now. I know she won't be, but Melanie should be ashamed of herself. Their experience, having their body count go up is no big deal. And anything that comes against it, well, you're shaming and you're toxic masculinity. Sorry, sorry, toxic misogyny. Misogyny is always toxic. And yes, shaming women for how many sexual partners they've had because you believe it somehow makes them less valuable, less worthwhile is misogynistic. 
And this is all ridiculous because the average number of sexual partners for a woman is four and six for men. Yes, there are people who will have slept with more people, but they are not the majority and most of them aren't doing anything with trains. Therefore, she continues the world needs a feminist movement that is against the pill and for returning to the consequentiality of uh, consequentiality to sex. The, um, that woman, the writer, Mary Harrington, is an unlikely spokesperson for the fundamentalist Christian morality. A one-time leftist, Harrington remains a fierce critic of, fierce, of free market economics and an opponent of abortion bans. This is so weird. Apparently, Mary would rather more abortions take place than for women to be on birth control. Yet her 2023 book, Feminism Against Progress, won her an avid following among American social conservatives, receiving um, adulatory notices in the Federalist and the National Review, and earning her bylines at the, at the conservative Catholic journal, First Things. Harrington's appeal to these institutions isn't hard to discern. She is, is a proponent of reactionary feminism. I didn't even know there was a such thing, guys. Of course, we have a new label. Let's see what that is. An ideology that shares Christian conservatism's hostility towards permissive sex norms, birth control, rights for transgender people, and mainstream feminism. But instead of indicting social liberalism on theological grounds, Harrington does not does so on entirely secular and avowedly feminist one. So basically the same beliefs that a lot of conservative Christians have, but it's not because of religions on a moral um, moral ground. Hers is this, it, it's, it's more, I guess, more logical or practical. I think the word she's looking for is secular. Her complaint with birth control is threefold. First, Harrington argues that the pill undermines sexual norms that had previously protected women from the hazards of single motherhood and exploitation. Yes, that makes sense. Considering the pill prevents pregnancy, how does being against it on the grounds of single motherhood and exploitation make sense? It's like Mary sees a problem, but instead of investigating, she just decided that the pill is what's to blame. And it is easier and more lucrative to blame something rather than investigate and advocate for societal change. And I don't want to just blame the pill. Like people, you can, you know, you can't just blame uh, an invention for why, you know, people's behavior. People are choosing to do these things. People are choosing to act out. Just like a person can choose to do crime. Things can become available, but it takes away personal responsibility when you want to blame an object or technology as to why people are doing the things that they're doing. Women still, it falls on our doorsteps that if we're spreading our legs, if we're spread eagle in these streets and getting ran through, well, then that is a personal choice. The pill has nothing to do with it. It just helps facilitate the choices that you've already made. First, I'm going to need a source for the claim that women are spread eagled getting ran through in the streets. And second, I'm sure the pill did affect things. Removing the risk of pregnancy is a weight off a lot of people's minds. But there's also other things to consider like STIs and general safety. Most people don't just have sex with whoever, whenever. Second, she insists that the advent of oral contraception led the feminist movement to embrace an excessively individualistic vision of women's liberation. Now, I agree with that. Before birth control, according to Harrington, the movement aimed to challenge the values of capitalism, insisting that familial caregiving was socially indispensable, even if it had no market price. But once they gained control over their fertility, Feminists no longer felt compelled to defend the value of caregiving. Their critique of capitalism ceased to be what it valued, what, what was profitable over what was socially valuable, and became that it merely didn't pay, what? Didn't pay women equal wages. Okay, so it was like, it, the feminist movement initially was like to value the woman's domestic role in the home, the women staying at home, women, women's contribution to society in that way was just as important as men. But once they had the pill and women can go into the streets and get ran through, well now, you know what, now women go in the workforce and do everything like that. And so they switched their argument to no longer rail against capitalism and, and how it didn't value uh, women who weren't part of the industrial kind of society. Instead of that, they now 
women were joining that because they were free like a man to engage in sexual activity without the consequences. And so now it's just about there's inequality in this industrial society. There's in, it is inequality. And that's when we hear about the wage gap, which has been a myth that has been busted many times. The wage gap actually isn't a myth and it hasn't been busted. See below for links if you're interested. And feminists still critique capitalism and still want to see housework and childcare compensated. Because, as I'm sure we all know, if a woman quits her job to take care of the house and kids, that means she's financially reliant on someone else, and that's a precarious position to be in. Also, housework and childcare is work and it benefits society. So why would it not be paid? So and then third, um, by uh, dramatically reducing women's vulnerability to unplanned pregnancy, the pill led feminists to indulge in the fantasy that there were no innate differences between the sexes and that, that couldn't be transcended through social reform and biotechnology. I absolutely agree with that, but I do not, again, want to blame the pill. These are things that women decided to do. The pill would just help facilitate what they already wanted to do. And we see this today where there's no difference between men and women. You know, women are as strong as men. Women can do it all as men. In fact, men are, women are now better than men. Feminism isn't about men and women being the same or women being better than men. It's about not treating people differently because of their sex. That is a simplification, but I have a reading list linked below for anyone interested in learning more about feminism. Even though it goes against all of biology, all of science, and then we have this weirdness now where you, you know, you have no gender and you, you know, you're you're non-binary, you're on a spectrum of things. So we're it, it keeps eating itself up, it keeps going, going, and going, and it's growing into a lot of the fever pitch delusion that we see out of there. But at the end of the day, the buck stops with a lot of the where feminists lie to women and fool women and and to believe in these things believing what things is it just me or does she say a lot without actually saying anything and believing they're just like a man and this is why so many young women are masculine this is why having sex with multiple partners and being in the street is not in in seeding themselves you know men can have sex with multiple partners i'm not saying it's right but what i'm saying biologically they can do it without emotional ties they can do it physically and, and because they don't have to carry a child for nine months, they don't physically hold the consequences. They don't have something in, inserting itself into their body and growing in their body. They're not creating life within themselves. So women have the higher degree of consequences. So when you take away the consequences of that, uh, where they no longer have any consequence of having to have a child, well then now the mentality says, well, I'm just like a man now. That that was the only difference between men and women. Now that women can go out and have sex like men historically have been able to well now it's it fixes everything but it has actually erased gender roles and actually tells women that femininity is bad i really like how it all boils down to sex with these folks but no though pregnancy is a big risk there's still other things to consider when about to have sex and the pill isn't 100 effective and the ability to have sex without getting pregnant doesn't mean women are like men and this gendering of traits is stupid if a trait is good for men to have there's no reason why it should be bad for women if a trait is good for women to have there's no reason why it should be bad for men and it labels anything that is masculine as toxic and misogyny anything masculine isn't inherently toxic or misogynistic. And fun fact, it was the men's mythopoetic movement of the 1980s that came up with the term toxic masculinity, not feminist. In summary, for Harrington, feminism is now defined by the key quixotic god can we just speak basic english god quixotic pursuit of women's freedoms from all social and biological constraints and that this anti-social utopian quest has served most women poorly condemning them to a sexually exploitative dating market alienating them from their own bodies leaving them vulnerable to the pred uh, predations of big biotech and exacerbating their caregiving burdens by promoting um, social atomization and male irresponsibility. Again, I still, it's blame shifting off of women's free choice. And you still see it's toxic for women and women are being hurt in the dating market. This is so weird. 
I obviously don't agree with Mary Harrington, but she's explaining what she sees as the pill's effects on society and all Melanie hears is women not taking accountability. And it's even weirder because I would say a woman who knows she doesn't want to get pregnant, regardless of whether or not she's interested in casual sex, choosing to take the pill or whatever her preferred method of birth control is, is taking accountability. But per Melanie, the pill is the cause of feminism and women thinking they can be just like men and thus the downfall of society and the ruin of men. Women Women are choosing to do this and then it goes to show the majority of men are actually being hurt in the dating market. The men are being hurt the most in my opinion by the sexual revolution. That's a new one. Where women once again would rather share and be polygamous with a top chat, a man who has the 666. He has a, you know, a, he's fine. He has a good looking face. He's over six feet tall. He makes over six figures. He's well above six inches. Strangely enough, the only people I've heard talk about the importance of penis size is men and red pill women. Like women are choosing to lay down and be with the same type of men. Women are choosing to have hot girl summers and racking up bodies. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but hot girl summer isn't about having sex. Melanie and others in her niche think about women having sex way more than women do. Way more than women even have sex, I would bet. Women's lives don't revolve around men. Women's lives don't revolve around having sex with men. Women are people, individuals with lives and hopes and goals. And yes, sex is part of that for most, but it's not everything. You see countless videos on social media. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You can't judge anything, not even the person in question, by what they post on social media. Social media is curated. It's what the person wants you to see. And most often, it's chosen for engagement of women doing these things, these most degenerate things, women have become degenerates. Women are the perverts now. Again, women are the ones choosing to engage and do porn. They will say, well, men, if they didn't consume it, but why is there no responsibility on the women who are choosing to do these things? Are they actually making the free choice to do porn or are they doing it because they need money? Also, what responsibility is Melanie looking for here? And again, we cannot blame the pill for these women having free choice. I'm gonna skip around a bit because this is a very long article, but this part it says, in the reactionary feminist narrative, all of this translates into fewer marriages, a collapsing birth rate, and with Gen Z, a widespread porn adult celibacy. At the same time, partly because oral contraception is not always effective, especially when imperfectly used, the normalization of casual sex has yielded increase in single motherhood. And although such mothers should not be stigmatized, Harrington and Perry argue it's nevertheless true that both mothers and children tend to fare better with a partner in the picture. Okay, so they can I mean, it's, it's, they're, they're acting like these women are just making, a, these people are making an argument and it does. No, statistics, facts, science, data shows that children fare better when there is a father in the home, period. Statistics show that children fare better with two parents, could be mother and father, could be two fathers, could be two mothers. Like, I know we try to get away from that and women don't want to accept it and the feminists, they still can't bring themselves to that point. From everything we just heard, it sounds as though Melanie believes women are sleeping with someone, getting pregnant, and then deciding to be a single mother for reasons. It's not because the man did something or left, it's just the woman decides to be a single mother. And that is such an oversimplification. But that is what Red Pill runs on, an oversimplification of complex topics. And that's not going to get us anywhere but they are getting there in a roundabout way where feminists are now seeing that the things that they have done has hurt society, has hurt children, has hurt women the most. Feminism has destroyed women. So the sexual revolution hurt men the most and feminism hurt women the most? I would like some details on both claims. So again, this article is very long. I will leave a link to it in the description box and it will be the pinned comment on the top of this video if you wanna go into the details of this. But I just wanted to make you guys aware of what some feminists are finally waking up to. I don't think they have, they're all the way there, but they are basically trying to return feminism into back to what it was to actually celebrate feminine roles in society and not diminish them. Feminine roles when it comes to sexual relationships and mating and bringing women back to equilibrium and not just trying to, you know, man bad, woman good and anything women, women want to do. Man bad, woman good isn't feminism, nor is feminine roles. If you're prescribing the way women should be, the way women should live, 
That's not feminism. Which the, the, the liberal mindset, the woke mindset tells us that is true. Anything that women want to do, they're saying it's wrong and they're aligning themselves with more conservative values. So I can't believe it. I feel like pigs are about to fly where feminists and conservatives are actually agreeing about something. Again, I'm not the arbiter of feminism, but I don't see how you can be a feminist and a conservative. Believing men are one way and women are another. Believing each sex has sex specific roles they need to fill in society. That's not feminism. Melanie ended her video with a request to hear others' thoughts, so I, of course, ventured into the comment section. Here are the top five most upvoted comments. Meanwhile, married men are given the cold shoulder by their own wives. We need to have that conversation too. Please note that we told them this decades ago and we were branded sexist for it. Confusing your body into believing it's pregnant for years on end and not expecting it to have an effect is insane. Casual sex with extraordinary different partners has destroyed women. Funny how my body, my choice is never applied to taking responsibility for the consequences of their actions. Funny how it's only considered taking responsibility when it's what these people think you should do. Unsurprisingly, the comment section was as thoughtful as Melanie's own commentary. But that's not what these folks are here for, is it? They don't want to dig to the actual root of issues and think about how to improve the world, let alone actually try. Honestly, I suspect the commenters want to wallow in their imagined superiority and Melanie is happy to make money off their laziness. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.